This is the third video in the area, we're looking at circles. If you were to use a set of compasses to draw a circle, you would place the point of the compass at your centre and the pencil would mark out the circumference of the circle, the outside edge. There's a relationship between the diameter of the circle and the circumference. The diameter is this line from one point in the circumference to the opposite side, going through the centre. So the relationship between the circumference of a circle and the diameter and also from that we can get a relationship between the area of the circle and we'll use the radius for that. Radius is from the centre to the circumference, half the diameter. I'm going to use a bit of software to illustrate part of it. Here's a circle, its diameter here in blue, the line passing through the centre, is set at one centimetre. The red outline, that's the circumference. Flatten out the circumference along the ruler here. It gives you a figure just over 3.1. So with the diameter set at one centimeter, the circumference with it just over 3.1 centimeters. Since say uh, the diameter's one centimeter, we'll set these at diameter lengths. It's just over three diameter lengths here, at approximately 3.1. If we make it a finer scale and zoom in on that point, you can see it's 3.1 and then just over 3.14. So the circumference is just over 3.14 diameters. That's the same for every circle. In fact, if you are to look at any circle and divide the circumference by the, the diameter, it comes up with a number which we can't write properly as a decimal because it's got an infinite number of decimal places and no pattern to them. It comes up with this number that we call now pi, it's the Greek letter P, that symbolises this number. So circumference divided by diameter for any circle comes up with this number pi. It's the ratio of the circumference to the diameter. We rearrange that formula. Instead of writing C divided by D equals pi, we can rearrange it and say C equals pi times D. The circumference is pi times the diameter. Approximately 3.14 is usually good enough. We also want a formula for the area. As an illustration, we've got this diagram. It's a circle radius r. Its circumference is this black outline. If we straighten out the circumference again, as we did in the last one, that distance is pi d. Circumference is pi d, well the diameter is twice the radius, so we can write it as 2 pi r. So there it is, that line is the straightened out circumference, 2 pi r. Now, the area of the circle is what we're after. If we divide it up like a pi into slices, like make as many slices as possible, if I want to find out that area, if it's straightened out, it's going to go right along the circumference because it's again, the outside of that circle was the circumference and that's it straightened out. So these uh, sort of jagged teeth, that's the area of the circle split up into segments and it goes along the length 2 pi r but we can fold back and fill up the gaps in the red one with the blue ones and now it's half as long so it's only pi r in length instead of 2 pi r, and it's almost a rectangle. Not quite. If I make more and more bits, slice it finer, what happens is, as we make finer and finer slices, it becomes a rectangle. If you could do infinite slices, it would become a rectangle. Length pi r breadth r. So the area is length times breadth pi r times r. That's pi r squared. Pi times r times r. So that's the area of a circle. So from c equals pi d we obtained area equals pi r squared. r squared meaning radius times radius. So these are the two formulae we learned to use. We can use pi as approximately 3.14 with the calculator will have a pi button on it which will be more accurate. So 
two formula to memorize c equals pi d circumference is pi times the diameter and you should know pi is approximately 3.14 and area equals pi r squared and you should know that means pi times radius times radius you should know the radius is half the diameter so we'll get the red line here's the diameter and the blue line from the center to the circumference is the radius to give that some figures suppose the diameter was 10, therefore the radius is half that 5. If you want the circumference of that circle, you're using c equals pi d, and you simply make d to be 10. And the calculator, it will come up with 10 pi, which is the exact answer. If you use an approximation for pi, that's it as a decimal, and that's it rounded. However, the exact answer is 10 pi because we can't express pi as a decimal. Area, pi r squared. Radius is 5. You simply put in the radius to be 5. I would write it twice so you remember you're squaring it. Again, that could just be 25 pi. That's the exact answer. If you use pi as uh, some degree of accuracy, 3.141592, etc and round it, it's approximately 78.5, the exact answer, 25 pi. So in that simple use of the formula, put d in place and e, c equals pi d, and put r in place and area equals pi r squared. So some applications, suppose you're asked the perimeter of this shape, the outside edge, that means it's got the curved bit, this is a quarter circle, so it's a quarter of a circumference. So, c equals pi d, so remember the diameter is twice the radius and this would be a radius 4 so we're using diameter 8 for the perimeter first get the curved bit c equals pi d with d being 8 I'll just put that as 8 pi to keep it accurate it's a quarter circle so we divide that before and it's now 2 pi for the curved bit but it's a perimeter it's the outside edge so it's not just a curved bit there's two straight bits 4 and 4 so it's a 2 pi the quarter circle plus two straight bits. If we put that in the calculator, it'll come up with this decimal, which you'll then round. So it's simply that's a quarter of a circle, and for perimeter, you get two straight bits. Area is pi r squared. The radius is simply that four. Pi times four times four is 16 pi. It's a quarter circle, so you divide it by four. Four pi square centimeters. That's the exact answer. If you want a decimal, and it's on the calculator, there's a, an SD button you press and it'll turn into a decimal. If you did, you would get that and you'd round it as appropriate. So, simply, quarter circle, quarter pi r squared, a quarter pi d, but in this case of the perimeter, you've got some straight edges to add on to get the full outside edge. So, applying this to the kind of question you'll get in a worksheet, which you can get access to if you click the link in the description and I'll have the answers with it. So there's a composite shape, it's got a rectangle and a part circle. You maybe see the division as a quarter circle on the top. So if we want the perimeter, we've got this quarter circle here, so that's a quarter of the circumference, and then we've got some straight edges. We need to know this bit here. So we've got the straight edge up the left 14 along the bottom 4 and then part way up but not the full way up and what happens is the radius here is 4 so that's 4 down from that 14 so that makes that bit 10 so you've got the 14 less a radius 4 to get this missing side to be 10 so the straight bits are 14, 4 and 10 and you simply get the quarter circle and then you add the bits together. So circumference pi d, radius is 4, diameter is 8, quarter it because you've got a quarter circle and now add up the quarter circumference and the 14, 4 and 10. It gives you an exact answer 2 pi plus 28 so that's the exact answer that's the way the answer will first be written on the worksheet. But as a, if you want it as a decimal you simply Press the SD button in the calculator. 
both these answers will be in the worksheet. So that's the circumference, quarter of the circumference plus the straight bits. If you want the area, same process, it's a quarter circle and a rectangle. Again, you had to work out that missing bit. It's 10, and now it's a 4 by 10 rectangle to get its area, and a quarter circle, pi r squared, and quarter it. So, here's a formula. Radius is 4, that's 16 pi, quarter it, and add up the rectangle and the quarter circle. It gives you 4 pi plus 40, which is approximately 52.6. So, that's an application of circumference to get the perimeter of a shape and area to get the area of a shape. The worksheet will give you lots of examples like that and it will want the perimeter and it wants the area. It will have the answers with it at the end. They'll be written in terms of pi and they'll be written as a decimal, unrounded. So you can check answers. So that's if you click the link in the description. As well as that, all the notes for uh, the whole of the area videos are also available if you click the link in the down, uh, click the link in the description. So there'll be examples, including circles, of everything in the videos. As I say, the worksheet over there with the answers at the end. Hope you found the video useful. The next uh, video will be on sectors of circles.